Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This is a sponsored episode by Regila Beauty. As women, our skincare needs are constantly evolving and changing, so it can get a little confusing when we need a new item to fit into our existing skincare routine to tackle new issues. Regila Beauty has a wide variety of items that are built to fit into your routine, whether you have youthful skin, mature skin, you're expecting, or you're even a new mama. If I told you that you could enjoy these benefits without the inconvenience or expense of changing your current skincare routine, but just by adding something wonderful and affordable to it. Skin that looks and feels more even-toned, firmer, hydrated, radiant, smoother, smaller pores. Well, Regila Beauty has the Hydrating Serum, and it is that something wonderful that I'm speaking of. It is perfect for busy moms at any stage of motherhood, whether you're trying to conceive, currently pregnant, nursing, or preparing for an empty nest. Our serum is the clean beauty, fuss-free add-in you've been looking for. It's formulated to be non-irritating for even the most sensitive skin. It's full of beautifying botanicals featuring hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and vitamin C, the ultimate anti-aging trifecta. It sinks right into your skin effortlessly between your current toner, moisturizer, without feeling greasy or sticky. It's unscented and also free of toxic ingredients that could harm your health. Get it today by visiting Regila's Amazon shop at amazon.com slash Regila, R-E-J-A-L-L-A, or click the link in the description box now. All right, Soul Family, welcome back to the Make Life Fun podcast. I'm so happy to have you here. I have my beautiful friend with us today. I'm having a lot of beautiful friends at the beginning of the year that is coming to share her light with us. And here I have Jackie Ruby, who is on the podcast, who is going to be sharing her light with us today. Welcome, Jackie, to the Make Life Fun podcast. Oh, Josie, thank you so much. I'm really grateful to be here. Yes. I would love for you to tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Like what is lighting you up right now? What is the fire in your soul? What is the message that you are holding close to your heart, but also sharing? Mm, I love that. What is lighting me up right now? I am in an amazing space of expansion. And that is something that I've been pondering for quite some time. And I feel like I have seen this type of growth year over year, but now is really the biggest it's been for me. And it is in my business. It is in my home, in my family life. I am really jazzed about it and stepping into it. Oh, so good. It is a thing that we think we can only have it so good sometimes in one area. Like we can have it so good in business, but then, so I love that you're bringing that you're in expansion. It is encompassing everything. So I would love for you to share with us how that journey for you to get to here, because I know it's a journey to get to here. Oh yeah. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) taking it back. Well, I have been on my own personal healing journey for about 15 years Mm -hmm. and It started with me repressing all of my emotions, really running around, partying, socializing, meeting people, staying busy all the time so that I didn't have to think. And when I did finally slow down, I actually was forced to slow down because I fell into a really deep depression. And that was when it all began and life started to change. So throughout the past 15 years, I've had amazing twists and turns and healing and sprouts a new direction. And one of the things that I love about healing is just when you think I'm cool, (laughs) something else really just stirs up and it's your subconscious, right? Trying to protect you earlier, but saying you're good now. Mm -hmm. So let's deal with this next piece. Mm -hmm. So as that really has unraveled, I then started a business a little over three years ago, I had spent my career in the travel industry and I was introduced to wellness travel and I fell in love with it. And it was a little bit devastating for me because when I fell into that depression, I was working in travel. So the fact that no one had introduced me to this space kind of blew my mind. It really could have supported me. And that was a gap in the industry. 
really, because people didn't know about it. So I set out to share that, to change that. I've always known this industry. So I've been focusing really closely around that niche. But one of the things that I've learned as an entrepreneur is we have to align with our joy. Because if you are running a business as a heart-centered, soul-centered person, and you're not doing something you love, every day is going to feel difficult. And I woke up one day and went, this doesn't make sense. If I have my own business, why am I going to feel that way? I'm not supposed to, supposed to (laughs) feel that way. But what changes can I make? So throughout this time, I've eliminated services, shifted things, changed, you know, a bit here, a bit there, expanded on new things. But now for me, what's really come is this message, this message that's been delivered through me as a speaker and to my clients over the past three years and can really reach a wider audience. So that for me, that message for me is around your authentic voice and this empowerment of it and really keying into the individual. So I've honed in on this care, this adoration, devotion I have to people, to the individual in their own journey. And how can I use that superpower to support others and be in this higher expansion? So I'm now offering coaching and speaking and workshop facilitations for all industries, which, and all individuals, which is really exciting and something completely different. And I had to get my head wrapped around it because I was so stuck in this, but you're in this industry kind of mentality. Yes. So breaking, like breaking boxes, like you have to be like, no, I'm going for it. I'm going to step into this. I'm going to step into it fully. And when you're speaking of the authentic voice, that is something that is so needed more than ever. Our voices need to be heard. I speak to moms, but this is for men as well and queer and all peoples that our authentic voice needs to be heard. But a lot of the times what we find ourselves doing is comparing, Mm -hmm. trying to model, trying to fit into this box that we were told that this is how you do it. This is the path you take. So when you find your authentic voice, you're like, no, I get to create my own path. And so I would love for you to tell us, take us on the journey of finding your authentic voice and how you help your clients find that voice that is right there so close, but yet so far away. You know, a lot of it was trial and error, right? I think as you find yourself in this depression, you start to question everything around you, Mm -hmm. the people that you're spending time with, the job that you have, your purpose overall, what does that even mean? And evaluate differently. And so even coming out of that depth, it changed me to look deeper, to look differently. I used to be in sales and I was really good at putting on the show, right? That's what I ended up calling it. I put on the show, I have a big smile and I have got great stories and I make people feel great when I walk in the room or I make them laugh or whatever it is that they need that day. I do that. And I realized after the depression, just how exhausting it was. And that was really cluing me into it no longer serving me. And I realized looking back now, it served me because it helped me hide. As I started to use my voice more in the corporate world, I noticed it being quieted. It was kind of this mock listening. And I knew that I had great ideas. I knew that my thoughts were important because I would have colleagues come to me before every conference, every quarterly meeting, every big team thing we had and say, you're going to ask questions, right? We always count on you to ask these questions. And it showed me everyone else was scared to, which I thought was interesting, but I wasn't because I wanted the answer and I really cared. And while I was doing what I thought was right, it wasn't impacting any change. And I just kept hitting this wall. I ended up noticing that the people around me being promoted were white women. The people in power saying no were those same women or white men. And I'm a Latina raised by a Latino dad who wanted us to fit. And so I didn't fully understand what any of that meant, what assimilating was, or really what my roots were because of this desire to blend into white culture to the dominant culture. And so it took me quite a while to understand that some of the ways that I was being silenced had nothing to do with my 
brain Mm. at all. It had to do with the color of the pigment of my skin tone, my hair, my hips, my gender, all of those things. I had experienced being silenced by men in the past. So I was used to it on a gender perspective. This element became really new to me. And it was shortly after that, that I said, I'm going on my own. And I was called to, and then once I did, I was building my own table instead of trying to sit at theirs. And that brought me a lot of power back. And I am also a survivor of childhood sexual abuse, of domestic violence. And so power and control is pretty important. I was done giving it up in unhealthy ways. Inspire Journey Consulting came to life October 10th, 2019. And I had to bob and weave, right? And learn who do I want to be? in this space. I'm the person promoting my business. I'm the person talking about things. What do I want to say? And oftentimes through trial and error, through client experiences, I realized what I didn't want and how important it was for me to own my values, what I stand for, and make sure that those come through very clearly in what I speak to and who I work with, as well as where I spend my money. Wow. My gosh. I'm just so into the story that you just shared so freely and so with heart. Thank you for sharing that with us. It is a journey to find your authentic voice. And it is a journey when you are being silent to have that gumption, that knowing on your heart that I'm just going to build my own table. And there are so many people and women that are feeling the call right now. that are like, I am going to build my own table but it is daunting. It is scary to pave your own path. And so the support is huge, right? That support piece is huge. So that's why coaches exist. So did you find that you were building your table with support or did you find you were building your table just going for it? I definitely got support. Mm -hmm. I am not scared to ask for help, but what I realized was it was really lonely and it can be really lonely in this space. And I am still a solopreneur with occasional contractors supporting me. And while I have the wonderful support of my husband and, and brilliant friends and my sister, who happens to also be an entrepreneur and open her business around the same time, I still needed more. So I have had m- multiple coaches throughout the years, actually, and they've all served me for different reasons at different points of my business and of where I am, plus therapy, which I'm a huge proponent of. And it's because of that that I see such incredible value. And for the professionals that I've been coaching along the way, I was taking a very different approach when it came to sales and marketing. And I'm now steering away from sales and marketing completely because it's done for me. But what I found was I coached them in a way that I wanted to be coached in a way that is caring, that takes into consideration who they are as an individual, their mental wellness in all of it their own pace. You know, I would give everyone things to stay accountable to. And then when they would come to the session, oh, I'm so sorry, Jackie. I'm so sorry. Like there is nothing to apologize for. You have a life. Let's go back. Let's see where you are. And and to celebrate successes along the way, because we spend so much time beating ourselves up and being in sales. It was always, you're only as good as your next sale. Once that's done, you've got to keep going. And what did you bring in today? And what closed and what didn't, and what are your numbers? And, and then as a business owner, you're unconsciously doing the same thing because we have to bring in business, but look at all of the brilliant things that you do every day and how much you learn and what you can do that you never would have been able to do five years ago or even a year ago. And you can still tap into that working for somebody else. My husband, who you might be able to hear because I live in an apartment in Boston and we have thin walls and he projects, but he ended up having an executive coach last year. And after his sessions, he would talk through them with me and he would tell me the advice that he was given. And he would say, and I know you've given me this advice before. (laughs) (laughs) So... (laughs) It was really kind of a beautiful thing that say that, you know, we can continue to talk about who you are in your brilliance, in what you're doing without you leaving or going or changing, right? I think that's a big part of what I'm so passionate about in this process is you don't have to change yourself. You lean into you 
you grow into you. You know, maybe you are shifting, not changing, but shifting and shifting in ways that are empowering and support how much you love you. Yeah, that is just beautifully put. That's so beautifully put because most of the time we think we need to become this whole new version of ourselves. We need to change who we are. We just need to literally step outside of ourselves and shed and turn into that butterfly. And so I love that you're saying that it's a leaning into because only recently did I discover this for myself. Like did Mm. that deep sense of knowing that you don't have to change. You just have to become. Mm. And that is such a, thing that's our own, again, personal journey to finding that. So that's all I wanted to say on that topic, for sure. I also would love for you to talk on, let's talk business. So let's talk entrepreneurship, because it is lonely, it is hard, and there are struggles. And the people that are stepping into it now, because since COVID happened, I think more people are realizing that it's a possibility for them, that Mm -hmm. this door that they thought was closed, is they can open it a little bit more. And what would be some of your first let's say third, first to third steps of like allowing yourself to walk through that door of entrepreneurship, because you have to give yourself that permission, right? Mm, (laughs) And doing it yourself and been doing it for three years, I'm sure you have some beautiful words of wisdom that will collapse the time for some of our listeners. Mm, Thank you. Well, I think if I were to do it over again, one of the things that I would probably start with is working with a coach because a lot of it is diving into you and understanding how to connect to your intuition. If you're not there, or even if you're kind of there, support is always really helpful. So asking for help, never, ever be afraid to ask for help. It's a sign of strength. I have fallen in love with human design. And for me, that is an incredible way to understand yourself and recognize when you're out of balance, as well as who you really are, who you're meant to be. And it gives you that boost, that confidence to move in that direction. And then also puts you in touch with your intuition and how to hear it and understand for your own decision making. That's been a huge one. Allow yourself grace. Throughout the years, you are likely to invest in services, you know, web applications or what have you that you might get rid of later. That's okay. It's part of your path. I started my podcast um, through Inspired Eyes in December, 2020. And within the first year, I believe, maybe a year and a half, I switched platforms three times, just trying to find what was right, not really knowing what I needed or wanted or thinking it was going to be anything, but it evolves. But just keep evaluating. It's like anything. We put so much pressure on ourselves and knowing that you don't have to work 15 hour days to be successful and productivity isn't always a measure of success. I think we need to flip the rules. I know I'm not giving you anything between one and three, but. Oh no, you are. (laughs) (laughs) Flip the rules of, of what you thought. I think that's one of the biggest pieces When you go on your own journey, be okay with it, shifting and twisting and turning, and instead just be open to it. Lean into what you love and discard the rest. Yes. And yet so, so much of it is that testing and trying and figuring it out and just taking that first baby step into it Mm -hmm. and allowing yourself to do the changes that you need to do as you move through. And a lot of it. So I'm going to take a little back because something that you said earlier about the ship shifting and being the smile and the bright light and lighting up everybody's day, but yet inside not feeling that it is so much of the same thing when we show up for ourselves in business. We think we can show up as that light that I won't want to say fake, but that plaster that we put on ourselves, that role that we give ourselves. But I think that we have to go deeper, like you were saying, even in business, we have to, like you were saying earlier, grow those roots, right? In -hmm. business. So energy part of it. So this Mm -hmm. is the part that was that was the game changer for me personally was the energy. So I had the mindset. I had the positivity. And to some, it may look like toxic positivity because I didn't know any different, right? I didn't know that I had needed to grow these roots to have that foundation to be able to hold my light. And so I would love for you to speak on the energy part of it, because I know that is a part that you definitely work with as well as the mindset. Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to your actual energetic shifts, you have to practice what you preach. 
it goes so hand in hand with the overused term of self-care, but it's important. When you're in this space, let's say of excitement, and you're working and working and producing, and it just all feels so great, but then all of a sudden you hit a wall and you don't know what's going on and you can't think of anything anymore and nothing seems to be working. Well, you've hit your energy wall and you're on the verge of burnout. Instead of actually listening to cues along the way to give yourself the rest and rejuvenation that you need. Some people are not meant to work nine to five or 12 to 12 or whatever it is that they're doing. One of the things that I had to learn was how I managed my own energy. And I still, every day, have to be mindful of that. I burned out more than I like to say. (laughs) And it wasn't until I recognized that in human design as a projector, you know, I need rest. That's incredible incredibly important to what I do. I might have high spouts of energy for like two or three hours, but then I've got to walk away and I walk away and I grab my adult coloring book Mm -hmm. and I color for 10 to 20 minutes, right? Or I do a meditation or I go for a walk or I get on Marco Polo actually, which I love. And I connect with somebody who I'm close with and listen to what they're doing or tell a story, whatever that is. Sometimes I even take a nap Mm -hmm. because I need that. And I have the luxury of doing that working from home. But if we're not tuned into that, we run that risk of just collapse. One of the things that I noticed, one of the many things throughout the years is when I'm burning out, I start to lose myself in a way that I question my business. Where am I going? What am I doing? Does this even make sense? Do people even know? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like I would find myself saying things like, I don't know. I'm confused. Maybe I'm thinking about, but I'm not sure all of this doubt, 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 doubt. And then whenever that burnout would clear, I'd be like, no. (laughs) And I'd feel brilliant again. Like, no, it all came to light. It is all good. No, girl, you were tired. (laughs) And you're allowed to be tired. You're allowed to be all of those things. And if you don't take care of that, you're not building something sustainable. So when you talk about those roots, I think that is that key piece of sustainability. If you're not managing your energy correctly, if you're not setting the stage for that, it's just a leaf in the wind, right? What about you, Josie? What, how has the energy shift impacted you and your business? Yeah. Oh, huge, huge. I went from modeling my mentors, modeling the people who I admire, who I love, who I cherish and finding my authentic voice. What is true for me? So that energy piece was, I get to protect my energy. I don't have to give it all away. I get to keep smoke for myself. Like that part was life-giving because I can give all day, but I had to turn that back on me and I had to start protecting that energy that I reflect so bright because it, it just wasn't healthy. And again, that burnout, when you do that, you your light goes out. Mm -hmm. And so you have to give some of it back to you. You have to give some of it back to yourself. But the truth of like finding my energy and grounding to the root of who I am, my message got louder. Mm. The calling got more clear. I now know without a doubt that self-acceptance, that self-love piece is a must. It's non-negotiable. You have to take your own medicine, as you were saying, because all day long I'm telling everybody love themselves and truly accept themselves. And I was not truly doing that. There was a time that I wasn't doing that. I thought I was because I was giving myself the trips. I was giving myself the shoes. I was giving myself the hair and make, you know what I mean? I was giving myself what looked, what seemed to me as self-care, but what was truly that self-care was protecting my energy. Yes. Yeah. I love so so much about that. And I think it's really interesting looking at it from so many different perspectives. So as a mom, as a business owner, and as a wife, a partner, and a friend, all of these things impact our energy. My daughter is 14 years old, snaps my energy, can also brighten it in so many ways. But what I realize is when I react to something or emotionally, I can feel that I can feel the hit energetically. I can feel the hit from something that I need to figure that out first. I need to replenish all of this before I can go back and be the best in that moment. Now, luckily for me, we're no longer at that toddler age, right? So I don't have to do an immediate other than a try and rephrase that, but we're in that phase. Try that one again. 
but it allows that time. Now, in the younger years though, and even still now, I'll leave the room for a meditation, even if it's two minutes to get myself back to where I need to be so I can go back and be my best. So that's something that is huge. Saying no to going out, what serves you, right? Mm -hmm. It could be different tomorrow and that's okay. But trying, making sure that you honor that. I love that you bring motherhood into this because that is such a key thing that we talk about motherhood and that energy piece of giving yourself that little break, that little rest to fill back up before you are so triggered that you can't see. Because once you can't see that it's gone too far. And so I love that you're speaking to that and giving tips on how to keep your energy there in motherhood. So I would love to talk a little bit more about the motherhood journey for you. And do you have just the one daughter? And how has motherhood, like you said, from toddler to now a teenager, I would love to hear how you're handling life with a teenager, because we all know, (laughs) we all know that journey for ourselves that are women that are grown and we're teenagers, what that journey is inside internally, what is happening? Like, it's just so much happening for a teenager. And so for a mom of one, I would love for you to know how you are navigating those waters. Yeah, it's, choppy sometimes. I felt for a while like I was in uh, a canoe with a hole in it, but now it's a much more sturdy private yacht. Mm. (laughs) Our daughter, Love, came into my life when she was five years old. So I'm her bonus mom. I mom her full time. So, you know, I am mom and have been for quite some time. And I bring up the other piece because it is a really important dynamic in our relationship and in our home and in what happens to me internally with my own energy, because I come to it always feeling like an outsider. And so there's that that negative voice that I have to counter and remind myself that that's an old story. It's not today. I belong here. When she was little, it was probably more difficult than it is now because of outside influences and that impacted her behavior and our relationship. It's a bummer for me because I missed a lot of what is joyous during those times. So I was finding my place, you know, when new moms are figuring out diapers and not sleeping, that confusion, right? That doubting yourself that you feel in those early days that I'm sure continues throughout the years in some fashion. That was where I came in at five years old, wondering, am I saying the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? I have to be perfect. I have to be perfect because there's other people watching. I have to be perfect because I fell in love with somebody who has a child and I don't want to mess her up. Mm. (laughs) I have to be perfect because she deserves it. I have to be perfect because if I don't, this dream that came to life will end. And that has lessened over the years. Still there. It still, it actually impacts me as a woman, as a romantic partner more now, but there are still moments in her teen years where she has angst against me because I'm an easy target and I feel it deeply and I don't want to be the one to solve it, candidly admit that. And even just in these past few months, I've had to face things, parenting that I wasn't expecting and I really wanted my husband to deal with. And that's taken a lot of rooting into who I am And changing that narrative and expanding it at home. So that queen that I am in business, I needed to remember that she's here too, that she's the mom in this house. She's the wife in this house. She runs this place. And how is she going to do that in a way that fits, that aligns? Years ago, working in corporate, I remember taking a test and it showed you the difference between who you were at work versus who you are at home. And there were so many people that were these completely different beings, but me, I was the same. And that's something that I've always been. I'm true to who I am and I bring that to each point of the table. So I want to make sure that when I'm parenting, I'm behaving and communicating in a way, but so that she's learning and growing and that I'm constantly mindful of not sinking into ancestral trauma and instead breaking the generational trauma patterns. Yeah. Amen to that one, because 
amen to all of it. Like you were speaking and I was just lighting up like a Christmas tree because you were speaking <laughs> truth. You're speaking life and definitely doing all that, but amen to the ancestral piece of it. And that one's a new one for me too, both in business and in my relationship and in parenting mm-hmm. now, like that is huge. I do not want to raise my son the way I was raised. I do not. I want to do it differently. I want to do it better. There's a part of me when I was saying this and thinking this, that was like, but if I do it differently, what are they going to say? Like, Mm. is there going to be a situation? And then it was like, does it mean that it was, you know, just the stories that go on in your head. And I had to come to the conclusion that I get to do things differently because of I who I am, right? And showing up differently does impact your family too. It impacts everyone. It impacts so many people. And so it's such a thing to say that it's possible. And how do you see the difference in your teenager by you being so intentional here? Mm. Well, she's incredibly emotionally intelligent. I love that. Her teachers tell us that the insight that she has into herself. And also what they recently said was how impressed they were with how much she shares with us. And that that is the biggest challenge, that they can do what they can to support the kids. But if the kids can't have that conversation at home, it gets stuck. But the fact that she says, I was already talking to my parents about this, I know that that creates a huge difference. I can see it in her demeanor. We had a really difficult conversation a few months ago where I was hurt, really hurt. And I took three weeks to process that hurt before I went back with parenting. Instead of addressing my hurt, I addressed the topic Mm -hmm. itself and educating instead. And she thanked me for Mm -hmm. teaching her, for giving her something to learn in this, and that she didn't want to be ignorant in this space. Part of that lesson is I gave her nine different articles to read and said, come back to me in two days and tell me all about them. And she said, do you want a written report? Do you want me to orally read it? I said, no, 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 I don't want that. I want you to have a conversation like a person and talk to me about them. And so she did. And it was really enlightening and cool to hear when you just sit back and listen. Oh, so powerful. So powerful. That's why this whole podcast exists. Because I see the change that can happen when the mom, the queen of the house, the queen of the castle decides to do this inner work, decides to dive a little deeper and be intentional and love themselves. Yes. Yes. And I will tell you, I know how easy it is to get caught up in all of the things that are happening around you and how many moms I'm sure have said to you, and are thinking to themselves, when do I have time? I do not have time. Well, we tell you, there are women in their 60s working in New York around the clock who tell me they don't have time either. You make time. You just do. And like I said, it can be two minutes. It can be 10 minutes. I have a girlfriend who is a mom of a two-year-old and the dad is always on the go during the weekends. So she is never off, feels like. She's got work. She's got kids. She's always those roles, right? (laughs) Raising my hand. (laughs) And that can be really exhausting. So I am mindful of that. And one day I went to her and I said, listen, I've got some things I need to get out. I'm going to go to a rage room. Do you want to go with me? It's 30 minutes. Here's the location. So with the driving time, right? However many hours that would take. And within 15 minutes, she said, I'm going to get a sitter. And she figured it out. (laughs) So we could go release and get that out. That was such a beautiful thing. Yeah. And the fact that you asked, you were so like, you saw it, you're like, you need this and I'm going to offer this to you. So brilliant because we moms, we feel like we have to do it all. We have to be super woman. We have to put on that super woman cape and just go for it. And that's the old model <laughs> that doesn't work anymore, especially yeah. now, stepping in 2023. So this message is to give you all mamas the permission you need to get the sitter, get the support, get the help. I'm speaking to me here too. I ain't going to (laughs) lie. I ain't going to lie. Oh, Jackie, your heart, your soul, you. Thank you for being, for being here, for sharing your story, your light. Thank you. Absolutely. It's really just been such an honor. 
Yes. So I would love for you to tell our listeners about your podcast. I want to hear who you interview, who is it for, and yeah, just whatever you feel called to share about your podcast and how they can connect with you, work with you, all the things. The floor is yours. (laughs) Amazing. Well, my podcast is called Through Inspired Eyes. I speak about healing travel, mental wellness, and how to be inclusive in travel. So really it's for anyone who's interested in travel in general or simply being a better you because there's so much to learn. What I don't speak about is anything that is around diet culture. I speak against it, but I don't speak (laughs) about it. So you're never going to find that there. Body acceptance is one of the main pillars for me. My company is called Inspire Journey Consulting. So the website is inspirejourneyconsulting.com. To work with me, there's a couple of different things. So we can look at coaching towards your authentic voice or simply a human design reading. But I do incorporate human design into my coaching as well because it's an incredible tool to support your journey. I have one more question for you before you go. So I love travel. I used it for not the right reasons. I used travel to run away. That's what, that was my thing. That was how I numbed out. Because if I could run away, maybe I could run away from myself. But we find that that doesn't work. (laughs) And so with travel, what, with it being such a passion, such a love, what would you say is one thing that you have learned that has been so valuable that travel has taught you? Mm. Whether it be traveling solo, traveling with friends, traveling with family. Travel has taught me new ways to heal. I have had incredible experiences, both in the States and internationally, trying things Mm -hmm. that I had never tried before that supported that journey. Mm -hmm. The Temescal ritual in Mexico, which is a traditional Mayan a cultural ritual helped me to let go of shame, the abuse I experienced. Doing a life mapping session at Canyon Ranch in Lenox helped me to set goals for my career, my profession, and eventually led me to my business. I could go on and on, but I have been so fortunate to, one, understand now that I can seek those things out, but two, to obviously to experience them. So I think when you look at travel, look at it in an intentional way of how it can give you what you need. And while we all think that we need to lay on a beach with a drink in our hand, and I do love that. I like to get my tan on. I like cocktails much as the next girl. When we do these different types of trips, these wellness experiences, it fills us so that we are actually looking forward to getting back to our life so that we can continue that journey and bring all of that back into our everyday. Yes. Brilliantly said, brilliant human. Jackie, thank you so much. (laughs) Absolutely. Thank you, Josie. This is incredible. Thank you for being part of the self-love movement. Your support and care matters here. Please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. And get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makelifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.